Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Simon Says Stamp, and today I have a special treat for you with the Simon Says Stamp and Art Impressions Limited Edition Christmas Train Stamp Die Combo. So this is the new limited edition set for 2021. It is incredible and amazing, but before we get to that, you guys know I love scene building, so we're going to build a little background scene, and it's got some grit paste, and I want that to dry while I'm stamping and coloring all of the Christmas train images. So on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch background, I am going to stamp the Simon Says Stamp Mountainscape image. I thought this image was gonna be perfect for setting off our Christmas train. I'm stamping the image with embossing and watermark ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. So here we're gonna just take this, and yes, I did start with a much bigger background than, when I, than what I end up using. Our finished panel will be four by five and a quarter inches. If you want to create something similar, you could totally start with that size. I at first thought I wanted the full size, but I ended up thinking that a little white border all the way around my scene would look really nice, and I am happy with how that turned out. Now I want to make sure that I get every little piece of this image heat embossed. So I'm kind of taking my time with my heat tool and I have it tipped at an angle so that I can really see when the embossing powder melts. And that is looking pretty good. I'm gonna flip it to the other side now. Now you could totally color in all of the individual trees, mountains, and sky, but with the detail in this Christmas train image, I felt like an ink blended background was going to be my best bet to not overpower the darling Christmas train. So we are gonna take some of my favorite Simon Says Stamp positively saturated inks and we are going to ink blend our background. Um, I accidentally grabbed my small ink blending brush first, but I think that the larger size is going to work better. I'm of course using my Simon Says Stamp blending brushes, I absolutely love them. And we're going to use two shades of green and all three shades of aqua for our card. So starting kind of, um, in the lower half of the design, I'm going to start with Lime Licious. I'm also using the Waffle Flower Stencil Mat uh, to ink this on. I like being able to use this underneath as I feel like it's so easy to clean up. So that is Lime Licious. Then we're gonna switch to Perfection. And this instantly starts to set off the awesome trees along the bottom edge. I love how it goes from the light to dark. Next, we're going to, to, going to take our shades of blue ink and we're going to start with my favorite sea foam, which is the lightest in the trio of positively saturated inks that are in the aqua shades. And we're gonna come from the green going up with the sea foam. And I'm gonna blend that color even down into the green. We want a really beautiful seamless blend. This is gonna be used the most. Then we're gonna have a little bit of surf and finally finish with a tiny bit of ocean up near the top. But I'm really concentrating on getting that beautiful blend from green to blue with the sea foam ink. Here is surf. I'm gonna go ahead and take that now and just kind of blend that from sea foam up, sea foam up towards the top. And then, we're going to go ahead and finish with Ocean, which is the beautiful dark blue color that's really only at the very top edge of our background panel. Now I'm gonna take a dry rag and buff away any ink that might be sitting on top of the embossed area. This is really important so you don't get ink, colorful ink on anything else, especially since we're gonna be using white grit paste to create some falling snow. So I cleaned up my stencil mat, and then I'm taking the Simon Says Stamp Large Falling Snow Stencil. Any kind of snow stencil is gonna work here. I just, this is one of my very favorites. You can see that it's very well loved. I've used it so much. And then I'm gonna take Tim Holtz's opaque white grit paste and a palette knife, and I'm going to lay that down along the top edge, and I'll use a stencil pal to kind of give a beautiful, even coat of the 
product all over the background for the falling snow effect. Isn't that awesome? Then I'm gonna set that aside to completely dry and we are right back to our Christmas train set. So this amazing, amazing art impression set comes with the train. It comes with, let's see, three, four, five, six, six elves, Santa, presents, a candy cane sign, and a candy cane. And I am gonna use every single image from this set. I was so excited when I saw this. I know you guys are gonna love this too. Art Impressions does the cutest little Christmas sets, especially if you guys remember last year, there was uh, the little deer barn that was so super popular. And I think this train is darling. My oldest son, when he was little, absolutely loved trains, train everything and so i am still always on the lookout for trains just because it gives it's like nostalgic i guess but i love 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 this and what you guys are going to love even more is that this train die has windows that die cut from the train meaning if you want to tuck your elves or presents or santa in the train you can which we are going to do the other thing i really want to make mention of is that art impressions has beautiful packaging they have the image um, on the packaging colored and then embellished with the with the uh, little elves and things so it really gives you some fun ideas if you want to create your own christmas train you definitely would not have to use all of the images that i am using here you could use more you could use less you could stamp multiples of the elves if you wanted to you could combine this with last year's set um there are a lot of things you can do. I just really wanted to showcase all of them and so that's why I ended up stamping every single little bit from this. Keep in mind, there are no sentiments in this set. That means you can grab any sentiment that you want from your stash, which I will show you at the end of the video. I am gonna start by coloring in like some skin tone and hair for my elves. I kept it super consistent. Um, with my colors I used, I used E00, 11, and 13 for skin. You could totally switch that up really easily. Um, I knew that I had a massive amount of coloring and so I tried to kind of limit uh, changing too many colors just to make it a little easier for myself. Um, it probably took me, I would like to say an hour and a half to two hours to color. They're pretty small images. And so kind of keep that in mind um, while you're doing that. I know I speed up the video as far as coloring goes so it doesn't seem like it's that long, but this was one of those cards that I really wanted to be transparent that because it involves quite a bit of coloring, um, it did take a little bit longer. So those were the colors for the face, R20 for cheeks, hair was YR24 and YR31. Um, a little R24 for any tongues that might be uh, showing. I accidentally messed that one up because it was so teeny tiny. So I just took E00 and kind of fixed that area on that little sitting elf. So I started with the elves and then I, I started with this part of the elves and then I ended up moving to the train and then I'll come back to the elves. And kind of the reason for that I knew which color combination I wanted to use for the train. And so I felt like maybe I should color that and then figure out what I wanted to do for the elves outfits. Um, definitely went pretty traditional with my color choices, greens and reds. You can d totally do whatever colors you like. I am using G24 and 28. However, I want to tell you I'm gonna switch to a lot of G43 with G28. And that's simply because I need a refill for G24. Um, so that is on its way to me as we speak. Um, of course, I, it couldn't come in time to finish this card. So I just picked a different marker instead to kind of help blend everything out. Now I did accidentally oversaturate my paper um, I didn't realize the die cut cut quite as fantastic as it did. So when I am doing like the little smokestack and thing here on the train, 
and it bleeds outside the line, I took a white pen and kind of tried to disguise the fact that it bled, but never fear, the dye cuts really close and you're not gonna be able to even see that. So uh, that's kind of happy, but I wanted to leave it in because I didn't wanna start over. Um, a lot of times I like to tell you guys when something goes wrong and how I fix it, even if that hadn't have die cut close, uh, the white pen right here is going to disguise the fact that that bled outside the line. Then for the holly and berries on the train, I am going to use our 24 and 46, but for the leaves, YG17 and 21, which is a little bit limier, brighter color combination. I'm going for darker greens for the train, and this really lends itself important because I am going to use that same color combination for the elves outfits along with a lot of red. I want to incorporate a lot of red into their outfits. Um, I opted for green for the train because that way Santa really shows off, um, you know, kind of pops off of it. I knew that the peppermint wheels on the train, I wanted to do red and white. So I really wanted to do something different for the majority of the train. Now this darker green color combination along the bottom of the train is BG 96 and 99. I actually absolutely love this. I almost feel like it has a little bit of a dark um, undertone, almost like a black undertone to it, which looks fantastic. Uh, next to the rest of the train gives it a little bit of a different look but it's not like a stark huge difference which is going to allow like the window casings and the top of the train cars to have a little added interest when I use some yellows and reds there. So I'm having to work a little harder to get my blending how I want it just because of um, my one marker running out of ink so do keep that in mind when you watch me color i'm kind of saturating the paper and then blending out pretty quickly so that i'm getting a better blend if you let it set and dry too much it may not blend quite as well might be a couple places of bleeding just because of how i'm coloring it but it'll be okay i did do dark and lighter red little stripes here. It's only three colors. It's our 24, 46, and 59, but I like how it kind of goes light, dark, light, dark. And then I'm just fixing with my white pen again, oops, so that I can make sure that when I die cut this, it's not going to look like there's areas that bled, even though there are. So let's go ahead and get a nice base color. A lot of times I usually lay down the dark color first, which is what I did on the train engine, but I found, quickly found that blending was a lot harder that way. So for the rest of the train, I laid down G43, and then I'm gonna color with G28 and G24. Even though G24 did not want to be cooperative whatsoever, <laughs> I got it to work enough for today. I'm loving this train. Another point I would love to make is that the train would be cute um, even on its own. I think it's just the cutest little image. I absolutely love it. You could even just use it and Santa if you wanted to, or like I said, you could always incorporate the reindeer if you have last year's limited edition set. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love when there are some limited edition little surprises here leading up to the holidays. It brings some of that magic of stamp timber into the rest of the year here at Simon Says Stamp. And I really worked on trying to get the best blending I could. Normally, I don't feel like I have to color over things this much, but um, I feel like leaving our struggles in really kind of helps show how maybe you can overcome them uh, in your own coloring. So here is the peppermint wheels, which are going to really start to bring this whole thing together. This is our 24 and 46. We're going to do this on all of the wheels, the big one there, and then all of the little small ones. 
we'll use warm gray 00 and 1 for the quote unquote white areas of the wheels. And of course, yes, when I'm all the way finished with my card and I've done all the other embellishing and added our sentiments, I am going to put glossy accents over the peppermints because I love a nice little glossy embellishment on a card. For the wheels, we're gonna use C7 and 8. So I'm gonna just quickly go and lay down a little C8 and then we'll blend out with C7. I noticed that I forgot some red there, so I went ahead and fixed that. So many little parts and pieces to color on this cute image. And then we'll just finish this. Um, I think this is the only area I'm going to use my cool grays for this card. We're gonna go back to our BG96 and 99 for the front of the train. We are going to use some reds back to our 46 and 24. Um, I really like this little idea here at the top of these train cars. So I'm going to use our 46 and 24 to blend this out. But once I have the blend the way I want, I'm gonna take our 46 and draw some little stripes. So let me make sure I have that blended. And then let's grab our 46 and just going up and down very lightly, I'm going to draw some light little stripes. And I like that little bit of pattern and texture. You could do this on any part of the train to add a little extra interest if you wanted to. Why are 23 and 31 were used for the yellow sections? I, in fact, used this for most of the rest of the sections on the train. I very much was inspired by the packaging that this Art Impressions Limited Edition Christmas Train Kit comes in. Um, I needed a contrasting color and yellow really worked nicely here without overpowering that traditional red and green that I was going for. All right, you guys, I think our train is about finished, which means we can skip back down to our elves, um, presents, Santa, and little accessory candy canes and finish up our coloring. So from here, it is a lot of repetition, meaning their outfits are all going to be the same. And I did that on purpose. You could definitely do all different colors. I think rainbow outfits would even be kind of cute, but I was going for that traditional look. So YG17 and 21 are going to be the color of the pants for the boy elves. And then for the little girl elf, I am going to do her dress in green. So she just kind of is the opposite of what I'm doing for the boys. And then uh, for their hats, I actually didn't do a ton of shading and instead went in with red and green markers and drew some little stripes. So they all have striped hats. And that again is very much on purpose as a little fun touch so that you, they have just a little pattern and interest to them. Kind of like on the train where I did the reds on red stripes. I really wanted this to be a little bit um, interesting. Now I decided their hands were in gloves. And so I am going to actually match the gloves to whatever pants or tights they have on, depending if it's a boy or a girl. And again, that's gonna be either my green color combination, YG 17 and 21, or red R24 and 46. The shoes are all gonna be BG 96 and 99 to keep it consistent. Um, Probably if I had been thinking ahead a little bit better, I would not have had to color in all of the image for some of them. If they are tucked into windows on the train and part of their body is hidden, wouldn't have to use the whole thing. I kind of wasn't thinking about it. So again, um, I colored in all of it. And I know I've made mention of last year's, the 2020 limited edition, um, reindeer barn set but something to keep in mind if you have that you can also use these elves or santa um, with that set if you wanted to so really mix and match the sets if you are a collector of these limited edition art impression stamp die combos
I added a little white pin detail for cheeks and to make buttons coming down the front of their outfits. And now that I kind of know um, what their outfits are gonna look like, I can very quickly go through and add all of my color to the rest of the images. Very quick, kind of messy coloring. I noticed I forgot hair and beards on these two guys down here. Darn it. So many little areas to color, so it's easy to do. And then we're just gonna do anything green. And then we're gonna go through and do all of the red. One place I will add a little, or one different color, I guess I should say, candy canes and the ribbon on one of the presents, we're gonna incorporate a little pink. Um, I didn't wanna go overboard with introducing other colors, but I think a little pink adds a, um, some interest to our designs. So now we're just finishing off our elves, adding the dark red first, adding red stripes to hats, and then we're gonna go in with our R24 and blend out. Look at them come to life. So much fun. Something else, if you're gonna use Copic markers that might make this a little bit easier, if you have the smaller tips for your markers, um, I, I have some and I've never switched them out, so I maybe ought to try that for coloring these in next time. I think it would make it a little easier. So remember when I said that some of the elves, I could have left some of them uncolored? For Santa, I knew I wanted him coming out of the train engine window, so I opted to not color him in all of the way. We're gonna leave like his legs and boots. And then I did introduce some warm grays for the pom-pom, trim on his hat, trim on his coat, and his beard and mustache, and eyebrows, I guess. So sweet. I just love the kind of traditional styling of these images. Okay, so now we have our candy canes that I'm trying to figure out the right pink I wanna use. So first I'm gonna go through with warm gray one and add just a bit of shading to the white stripes. Then I lay down my pink color and then I'm gonna go in with red. So our candy canes basically are red, pink, and white. I kinda of think it's fun to add in a little bit of that pink with RV11. We're gonna do that here as well. I'm just gonna go through real quick with my pink, my warm gray one, and then our red. So the sign also is going to allow us to incorporate some other colors. We have E55 and 57 for the signage. We have some cool grays for the lantern and then YR 23 and 31 to make it look like light, make it look like light is coming out of the lantern as well as BG10 to make the snow sitting on this image kind of look like it's snow. I don't wanna leave it stark white, um, but I don't wanna color it it in all the way, so I'm just barely using that cool shadow to add a little bit of interest to that snow. So cute. Here's our presents, and we almost have everything colored, and then we're going to be ready to die cut. So for the dies, they come um, together. I snipped them apart with my wire snips, and then I simply used a little post-it tape to hold the die in place and then ran the whole thing through my die cutting machine, die cutting each of these images. I wanna use post-it tape. These images took quite a bit of time to color and I was slightly afraid that um, they would shift when running them through the die cutting machine. So I made sure and simply held them down in place with that post-it tape while die cutting. Um, I love the pink and red of that little package there. I think the pink really adds a lot. And then of course, green and red for the final one. I did add some little red stripes on the red package too, I forgot to say. So I'm gonna grab my wire snips, oh, and I did add buttons to the front of everyone's little outfit with my white pin. Here are those wire snips and I'm simply trimming everything apart. And 
and then we will tape it all down. So I'm really excited to show you how the train and elves look against this amazing background. You can see here is the train die and here are how the windows cut from the train. The dies do, the die line is very close to the stamped line so you don't get a huge white outline with these images. So if you're one that doesn't like the white outline, Art Impressions does a fantastic job with their dies, I feel like, where they cut really close to the images. Okay, here are our train and elves, and I'm going to kind of pop them all out and start playing around with placement. So I really fiddled with Santa a lot, and I wanna showcase this part of it. I ended up snipping off part of his arm, and then I realized that I made a horrible mistake. Well, I did not wanna restamp and recolor him. So what I'm actually gonna do is do a little die cut surgery. So let's tuck him into the window. I'm gonna use some Honeybee Stamps clamp, uh, well, it's not a clamp, tweezers, <laughs> reverse tweezers. I call them a clamp because I use them for a clamp. And then I simply glued Santa's arm back in place. Um, just being really careful to line it up perfectly. I don't think it's that super noticeable. So if you ever make a mistake like that, don't be afraid to just kind of glue it back together. Um, I did not want to do uh, stamping and coloring and die cutting again because this was quite a lot of work and so I was able to fix it that way. Now I'm going to just play around with the elves. Um, I love that there's some sitting elves, there's some standing elves, uh, just so many options. And of course you definitely do not have to use them all. I just uh, felt like I needed to I think. <laughs> and I like how that little guy at the end is almost like hooray or whatever, throwing his arms in the air. Now, one thing to note, our background does kind of have a lot going on, even though I didn't color in the individual images. And the way I feel like that showcases the Christmas train the best is popping it up with foam adhesive. I'm gonna use a combination of large and small foam adhesive squares, or maybe it's even some foam adhesive strips, depending on the image, to pop everything up. That includes our candy cane signpost, the individual elf, all of that good stuff. And then I've tucked those presents into the train cars and Santa is holding the individual candy cane in his hand. For my sentiments for my card, I'm gonna use a combination of greetings. So we have the Ho 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 from the Simon Says Stamp Good Cheer Stamp Set. I thought this was perfect and I absolutely love that there's a coordinating die for Ho Ho Ho. And then I wanted a Merry Christmas that was small and and I wanted it to be in a certain format because there is a Merry Christmas and Good Cheer, but I wanted it to be horizontal and not stacked words. So I actually picked a the Merry Christmas from Tiny Words Christmas. So Tiny Words Christmas Merry Christmas is going to be stamped on Hero Arts Palm cardstock. Um, I accidentally grabbed Happy Christmas first, which would be fine. I just, I wanted the Merry Christmas. That's why there's two stamped phrases on this scrap of palm cardstock stamped it with clear embossing ink, heat embossed with white embossing powder. Then for the red, we're using some Simon Says Stamp Schoolhouse Red card stock, and that is where we're gonna stamp Ho Ho Ho. And then we'll take the coordinating die and die cut Ho Ho Ho, and we'll take a sentiment label die from Simon Says Stamp and die cut the Merry Christmas into a strip. We went ahead and did uh, that grit paste on the background. So I think our sentiment really needs to be popped up on a separate piece of paper. You're not gonna be able to stamp over that and have it look really good at this point. And I need the sentiment to, I don't want it to overwhelm the design, but I want it to complement the design. So I picked the red and green, of course, from the reds and greens we used for the Christmas train images. And now I'm just gonna grab that coordinating die and die cut everything. Now, this is where I realize that my background is still A2 sized and I'm going to trim it down to four by five and a quarter inches as soon as I get these sentiments die cut. And I wanted to show you how Ho 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 fits right around 
that sentiment. I think it just works so great with this set. I used a powder tool, so you, if you use a powder tool, make sure you buff away any of that powder after your embossing has dried. And here's what it's gonna kinda look like. I always like to lay it out first. I'm gonna grab my Tim Holtz paper trimmer and trim down my background. And I ended up just kinda trimming a little from each side instead of just trimming that quarter inch off of um, a long side and a short side. I generally like to do that because I feel like it makes it a little bit more balanced. So it's just a tiny bit smaller and now I just need to figure out my placement. I'm gonna put that foam adhesive off camera because I did use a lot, I'll show you. And then I'm just gonna pop that train in place. I do end up having to move it just a tiny bit more to the left to leave enough room for the last elf and the candy cane signage. I did go ahead and position a little skinny strip of adhesive back behind the candy cane. And here's where I'm realizing that the elf is completely covering up the lantern. And I want you to see it a little bit. There we go. Now, so remember I said I did not want to restamp Santa when I messed him up. I actually went through with a black jelly roll pen and added detail to the eyes on my elves. And I accidentally smeared the eyes of this poor little elf I'm fiddling with right now. So this elf, just being fully transparent, I had to pull him off and I had to um, re-stamp, recolor, and die cut. But I felt like it was important because I totally messed him up and I, there was no way to fix it. I'm going to pop up my sentiments with some foam adhesive as well. And now finishing detail time. That's going to be our black jelly roll pen for eyes. That's going to be glossy accents for the wheels. That's going to be some little red hearts as the steam coming out of the engine there. Fun little things like that. Maybe some white pin detail if I have forgot it on anything else. I didn't really go too much into that on this particular card. I'm gonna add some little highlights to the candy cane or candy canes. Also to the wheels, little dots to the cheeks. And once we pop this onto a white side fold card base, it's going to have that perfect little white border all the way around, which I think ties in nicely to the white borders around the die cuts, our white embossing, our white grit paste, all that good stuff. And there we go. Oh, so cute, so much fun. Here is that black glaze pen for the eyes. And I saved the glossy accents to the very, very end. There's where I gave that one elf a pirate look and I'll have to redo him. Okay, it's all been almost fixed. I don't think I fixed him quite yet. I think I did it maybe after the glossy accents. So I'm gonna add glossy accents to the wheels, the steam and all of that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Please be sure to visit the Simon Says Stamp blog for more information. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.